You may have used methods like the trapezoidal rule or integration in calculus before to approximate the area under a curve. Simpson's rule looks to do the same thing, but by finding the area under a polynomial that is fitted to the curve. We'll be using Simpson's first rule, so named because the multipliers follow a 1, 4, 1 sequence. Simpson's rule is handy in naval architecture because before CAD, naval architects would have to find water plane and station areas by hand. Let's take a look at the following example. I'm going to label my center line right here as if I'm looking down on the boat. And then I have some water plane area at some specified water line. And I'm only showing half of it on my half breadth plan uh, because the hull is symmetric. Since an odd number of points are needed for Simpson's rule to work, I'm going to label 11 stations. Each of these stations intersect the water line and the center line. The distance between them is called the half breadth. To find my water plane area, I plug each of the half breadths into the following equation. H divided by 3, where H is the distance between each of these stations. Then I have Simpson's multiplier, it starts out with a 1, multiplied by my first half breadth distance at station 0, plus 4, which is my next Simpson's multiplier, times my half breadth distance at station 1, plus 2, which is my next uh, Simpson's multiplier, by my half breadth at station 2. I go back to 4 for my multiplier half breath at three and it just continues on until the end where Simpson's multiplier changes back to a 1. That way 1 begins the equation and 1 ends the equation where everything else in between is alternating between 4 and 2. Of course, because we're looking at a half breath plan, the area of my water plane is only the area shown on one side of my boat. So really I would need to multiply this by 2 in order to get my entire water plane area. For the purposes of the boat design competition, students do not have to use Simpson's rule to calculate water plane and station areas. These values may be lifted directly from CAD. However, Simpson's rule is applicable to calculating volumes as well, and we will use this in the boat design competition. Imagine instead of half breadth distances, I have station areas. I can use Simpson's rule in the same manner to connect these areas in order to form a volume, which in this case will be volumetric displacement. So let's say instead of looking for my area of my water plane, I'm looking for my volumetric displacement. And I'm going to find this volumetric displacement, say, by my station areas. That means instead of looking for my distances to get my area, I need my areas of my stations to get my volume. Either way, the more complicated the hull, the more areas I will use in order to better approximate my value. And this is how I use Simpson's rule to either calculate my station areas, my water plane areas, or my volumetric displacement from those areas.